Uh, great. I want to welcome everyone to the March meeting of Community Board 8. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Laura Spolter, Chair of the Board. Uh, welcome, welcome all. Okay, as we always do, we'll start with the gallery session. Um, is Ziamara Loarte on the call? Hi, Laura. Yes, I'm here. Oh, great to see you. Go ahead, um, Ziamara. Ziamara is from the Central Labor Council. Thank you for joining us. Go ahead. Thank you for having me. Um, sorry, apologies if you hear a tiny human in the back. Um, she is mine. Uh, <laughs> So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Tiamara Loarte. I'm the, new, I'm the community, uh, community Outreach Coordinator at the New York City Central Labor Council. Uh, I come to the Community Board 8 meeting today just to um, introduce myself to all the uh, board members at CBA in the Bronx um, and to uh, formally introduce not just by myself, but our organization. So for those of you who are not super familiar with the New York City Central Labor Council, we are a... a um, a local body of the AFL-CIO. We are in a uh, we are a labor organization made up of three about three hundred labor unions in the five boroughs. Uh, our jurisdiction is the five boroughs in New York City. Uh, we represent everything from teachers to uh, to doormen, uh, security guards, ticket takers, stagehands, nurses, uh, residents, um, and uh, really everything in between, um, you know, in our affiliated organizations. And the reason why I'm coming before the board is to just extend, uh, extend solidarity and above all, you know, really uh, come before you as a resource. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of conversation or a lot of noise that tries to pit community against labor, and that couldn't be further from the sentiment that we carry within our organization and within our movement. Uh, we know that workers do not live at work; they live in neighborhoods, they live in communities, just like those that are represented under CB8. Um, and so, our goal at the New York City Central Labor Council is to be a resource not just for our affiliates, but for our community allies as well. Um, so, if there's ever an you know any resource that we can play, any partnership that we could um, that we could collaborate together on uh, you know for the business of CB8 I just wanted to formally introduce myself and extend myself and the organization um, thank you Laura and thank you Eddie uh, for making the connection thank you and you were very helpful in getting a speaker for our health hospitals and social services committee uh, from uh, representing the nurses and discussing uh, the strike at Montefiore and different issues so thank you for that um, our next speaker Will be uh, Joan Burns Daly. I got scared. I saw something on the oh. phone. Uh, Joan, are, are you on the call? I saw your name before. Um, okay. Um, thank you for joining us. Joan is from the director of the Bureau of Community Affairs, uh, New York City Department of Sanitation. I'll ask everybody to please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Right so I just where you learn how to crawl, Miss Nathania. Please I mute yourself. What's this so I'm so, so sorry. That's, that's okay. Please, please. What are you crying for? Please, Bravo, please mute Nathania. They the, hit you. The board can mute him. Her, 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 her. We're working on it. Thank stop you. it, okay? We're we're trying to we're trying to resolve this. Sorry, a couple things are happening at once. All right, sounds quiet now. You ready for me? Okay, that, cool. that was reminding me of my own boys when they were young. <laughs> okay, Joan, I'm sorry, go right ahead. Yeah, no problem. So my name is Joan Burns. I'm from Department of Sanitation's Bureau of Community Affairs. And I'm here today to talk about the waste set out time change that goes into effect on April 1st. I just wanted to let everyone know that currently New York City's set out time is the earliest of any major city in the US. Um, this new rule is going to reduce the time that trash obstructs sidewalks, making our streets cleaner and reducing rats. So residents have two options to set out their trash, recycling and composting. It can be after 6 p.m. in a container of 55 gallons or less with a secure lid. Or if you want to use bags instead of a container, it can go out after 8 p.m. We ask similarly to now that 
all waste gets set out before midnight so that we can ensure collection in case your route is an overnight shift. So there are alternate set out time options. Buildings with nine or more residential units can opt in annually for set out times between four and 7 a.m. And we accept applications in January each year. We accept the January applications this year already, so that's closed at the moment. But there is a website that you can visit to get more information on that for next year, nyc.gov slash multi-unit setup. <coughs> and I can put that in the chat when I'm finished speaking. Um, I also wanted to quickly go over what the rules are for businesses. So similarly to residents, they have two options for their trash recycling and curbside composting. It's one hour before their business closes if they're using a container with a lid or after 8 p.m. if they're putting bags directly on the curb. Now for businesses, it does not apply to people who or businesses who put their waste out from a loading dock. This is just about getting bags off the curb. And for businesses that do choose to use containers, we wanna remind them that they must be removed when the business reopens the next day. So we're conducting outreach to residents and businesses, these meetings with community boards, we're sending out mailers, we're making lots of phone calls to buildings with janitorial staff and community groups. And we're running a paid media campaign with print, digital, radio, and public space advertising that you may have seen around. So um, if you have a question, I have finished with my presentation. So if you want to open it up to questions. If not, that's fine too, up to you. Madam you Chair, you're on mute. Okay, okay. We will put any information you send us on our website and on our social media. And we'd be glad to also uh, have you visit an economic development for the businesses or the Environment and Sanitation Committee, you know, to go into things in more detail. Um, this was a wonderful overview. Um, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Okay. Um, our next guest is Erica Diaz from the community, the community engagement coordinator from the Bronx District Attorney's Office. Uh, Erica, are you able to join in? Is Erica Diaz on the call? Do we know? Well, I'll, I'll circle There's back. There's an Alex Ruiz. There's Alex. an Alex Ruiz. Oh, from the uh, Office of the Bronx DA? Uh, yeah. The Bronx Borough President's Office, Alexis Ruiz. This is this is Carl Schultz. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not up to the Borough President's Office. This is uh, oh, Carlos, the Carlos uh, Torres from the Bronx District Attorney's Office. If you want me to say a few words on behalf of the office. Uh, sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry, your name again? Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Carlos Torres. Okay. I believe Erica uh, was out of the office today. So uh, my name is Carlos Torres, everyone. Um, I'm the Crime Prevention Coordinator at the Bronx District Attorney's Office. On Saturday, April 15th, our office will be hosting a child safety fair. Um, once the flyer has been approved, I'll let Erica know to please send out the flyer to CB8. On Wednesday, April 19th, from 12 to 4 p.m. at Hostos Community College, our office is going to be hosting its annual reentry resource fair. Um, once that flyer has been approved, make sure I send that out as well. Um, I, it doesn't seem like I'm allowed to put my contact information in the chat box, but what I would do is I'll email CB8 my contact information. Um, that way, if anyone on this call in the community has any concerns, um, please feel free to reach out to me. And once again, my name is Carlos Torres. I'm the Crime Prevention Coordinator at the Bronx DA's office. And I'll, I'll be on this call to, till the end. I appreciate you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Thank you for joining. Um, our, our final. You got a hand up, Laura. Laura, it's Merlin. Uh, Chuck, go ahead. Torres. 
Uh, I believe the chair of the board wrote to your office <clears throat> concerning a question involving the conflict of interest laws and a um, senior official of the Department of Homeless Services who was awarded a contract to a sibling. Um, I know that you, or I assume you have not seen that, but I would suggest if you have the opportunity, you might want to follow up on that. Definitely, that was going to be in my chair's report. I was, I was thinking, boy, have we have news for you. <laughs> um, thank you, Chuck. Uh, more about that in a few minutes. Um, our final speaker is Seth Kaplan, owner of P&K Grill. Seth? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Seth Kaplan. I'm the owner of P&K's Grill at 170 West 231st Street. Thank you for having me this evening. I uh, was born and raised in Community Board 8. Um, I attended nursery school, primary school in the community. Uh, my parents still live there. My children frequent the parks. Needless to say, I am vested in the community. And my mother likes to joke that the first place she and I ever went to eat together was Piper's Kill, which also used to reside at 170 West 231st Street. So in 2016, when I had the opportunity to purchase this business and revitalize it to become a modern day eatery that could continue to serve the community for years to come, we jumped at the opportunity, albeit the economics were not in our favor. That said, we've made it work and created a thriving business that now employs over 25 people and allows us to support the community through things like sponsoring the Kennedy Knights football team to provide them safe equipment, sponsoring Little League teams in the Little League Riverdale, um, the Riverdale Little League, excuse me, um, and creating, most importantly, a safe and fun environment for people to enjoy what we believe is still the best burger and wings in the Bronx, along with a nice cold beverage of their choice from time to time. I'd like to acknowledge that the lapse in our license is entirely our fault, regardless of where processes may have failed. It should have been on our radar and we should have been more proactive in addressing this. That said, running a business is very difficult, especially in today's environment, and we missed it. I am grateful and overwhelmingly thankful to this board, to Mr. Pablo Romano, Mr. Nick Fazio, Mr. Ed Green, Chair Laura Spolter, and to all of the community board members who took time to review, discuss, and help us move forward towards resolving this matter as expeditiously as possible. And I wanna thank you for taking time this evening to hear the resolution that we're putting forward so that we can get our liquor license reinstated as quickly as possible, and most importantly, keep our employees working and keep providing an amazing space for people to enjoy good food and drinks within the community. Thank you for having me, and I'll be here to answer any questions if needed. Thank you, Seth. Um, that resolution will be coming up during the Public Safety Committee along with some other resolutions, and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Let's see, um, what do I, I'm getting a note, Officer of New York City Council member, Perina Sanchez, um, raising a hand or is the councilwoman here? I'm, I'm not clear on what I'm, I'm getting. Hello, good evening. I wanted just a moment, I was gonna put it in the chat, but then I realized there was no oh, yeah. chat. So okay. <laughs> good okay. evening, everyone. My name is Chanel Goring. I am the community manager of District 14 in the office of council member Perina Sanchez. Just wanted to introduce myself, let you guys know that the council member staff is here and we're here just to provide any information for the office. We're located at 2065 Morris Avenue and we're open to constituents Monday through Thursday uh, not correction, 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, I will send an email with my personal contact information. Yes. And then also on May on Monday, March 20th at 2 p.m., we're hosting a community wellness fair, and that'll be on the corner of 183 Street and Walton Avenue. Good evening, everyone, and I'll be here for the remaining of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Laura? Uh, regards to Officer 
uh, to um, Council Member Sanchez. Okay, I'm going to. Um... Excuse me, Laura. Yes. I just wanted to let you know that we're joined by Council Member Dinowitz today. Yes. Okay. I have that down. And after right. my chair's report, um, I also I want to recognize that uh, Greer Mayhew from the Comptroller's Office is here. Um, Alina Dow from the Mayor's Office is here, and um, you know, uh, Council Member Eric Dinowitz is here, and uh, we'll get to you in just a moment. But I want to acknowledge. I'm always grateful to have elected officials and uh, staff of elected officials come see what's going on in Community Board 8. Okay, um, I'm going to proceed with my chair's report. And uh, before I begin my chair's report, I wanna raise the following. Um, at the end of our meeting tonight, we will vote to go into executive session to discuss a real estate matter. And I anticipate that there's going to be a resolution that will be voted on in public afterwards. Um, I now wanna make a motion to add that real estate resolution to our agenda. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Um, is there anyone opposed to adding that to the agenda? Is there anyone abstaining? Okay, so we will have that at the end of the meeting, and thank you. Uh, now just a few announcements. Um, the street naming for our beloved Bill Stone will take place on Sunday, May 7th at 11 o'clock um, at 237th Street and Hudson Manor Terrace. Uh, Bill was a beloved board member and former chair uh, of this board, and um, I'm looking forward to that. And more will be posted about that. Uh, secondly, we have some April date changes because of the Passover holiday. And I will be sending a note out about this, but I just want to throw out to, you know, save the date. Executive committee will be held on Monday, April 10th. And the full board meeting will be Tuesday, April 18th. Uh, everything is a week later. Um, an email will go out. I want to say that the Irving Latimer Community Service Award and, and Most Valuable Merchant Award press releases and notifications will start this week. So watch for that. Um, an ad hoc committee has been formed to review the nominees for the Irving Latimer Awards. Um, so far, they are Chris Calhoun and Leona Tenton, and thank you for stepping up. Uh, now I have an update on 6661 Broadway. It's a little involved. We just learned that the Department of Homeless Services has entered into a contract with a new provider. That provider is West Heb Inc. They actually are located in Yonkers, but they operate uh, many homeless shelters in New York City. The contract is for $354,838,000 and runs from June 1st, 2023 to May 31st, 2055. We found this out by doing a deep dive into a public database, Passport, um, and uh, this the status of this contract is listed as in progress. That means the contract has not yet been received by the controls office. This is excellent news because once a contract is received by the controller, he has 30, only 30 days to approve it or disapprove it. And the public comment period is that same 30 days. Um, a little bit now about West Hab. On March 5th, New York Post did an expose on the relationship between West Hab Inc. and the Department of Homeless Services. This is what Chuck was referring to. The article states that DHS administrator, Jocelyn Carter, has a sister, Valerie Smith, who is vice president of West Hab. The city has awarded 17 contracts to West Hab. It's valued at 1.7 billion. 
billion dollars. Now, having this relationship is um, does not pass the smell test. Now, that article referenced council member Robert Holden, who has a men's shelter operated by West Hab Inc. located in his Queens district in Glendale that borders Middle Village. It's been there, it's been operating for two years. According to the council member, it is a disaster. And his office has sent me videos, articles, because I learned this on Thursday and was able to contact his office on Friday and speak with his staff. He spoke at length about crime and other negative issues surrounding the shelter, particularly drug abuse. Hearing this, I also was able to contact and connect with the district manager of Queens Community Board 5 um, to discuss the shelter in their district. Now, Councilman Holden has demanded an investigation by the Department of Investigation and Conflicts of Interest Board. Um, for us, we don't have that shelter here yet. We don't have that provider yet. And we don't know what the window will be when it moves from in progress to the controller's office. Um, and I do want to thank um, uh, Greer from the controller's office for his assistance, his help. I am constantly contacting that office, asking, is there any news? Is there any update on that contract? Um, and this time he gave me a link. He gave us a link uh, to, to check. And I thank Luke because he did a deep, deep dive into, uh, you know, from that link into Passport, which is something that's not easily accessible. So that is how we saw the data. And then I circled back with him and learned what more about the status of this. Now, time is of the essence here. And right away, you know, we spoke to Eric and to Jeff and sent something to Senator Rivera's office and, you know, and Chuck and of course Omar and you know we're we're meeting about this and a letter went out from us as Chuck um, referenced to the Bronx District Attorney's Office and a letter went out from the board and um, Senator um, Assemblyman Dinowitz and Councilmember Dinowitz to the Mayor's Office and CCing the Conflict of Interest Board and also the MOX because we object even to the fact that Department of Homeless Services is substituting one provider for another without any transparency, without any going to MOX, new RFP, whatever. It's just, we believe the original contract was with AAPCI and it just can't be substituted you know, differently. So between the, the, the nepotism uh, and, and, and you know, the horror stories related to that, um, provider, we were very busy between uh, Thursday, Friday, Monday, just so that I can get all the facts. And I will be sending out what we have, you know, mailed and you know what we're working on to the board. Um, let me see. By the way, there's that strip there, you know, at six 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 one Broadway. And there are only two businesses left. The two businesses are fighting the eviction notice. Others have gone. Um, there is a court date in early April. Um, my understanding is the property remains in contract um, and it will be sold when all the businesses have vacated. vacated. It, will, it will finish. Um, this was very, upsetting news. Um, we're acting as quickly as we can. Um, we're going to reach out to the newspapers, with, you know, with, with these facts as, as they come on board. The council member, the, the, yeah, the council member in Queens has been extremely helpful. And um, are there any questions? Yes. Okay, participants. Okay, Marty and David, go ahead. You know at this point whether or not this contract is similar to the previous one where the city pays through the contract to purchase and build the property. And at the end of the contract, the, the agency 
earns is the owner is the owner of the property gets a gift we shall find that out aapci was the owner of the last building um there are several llcs that have been established to buy this building one of them is court square one of them is uh, 6661 enterprise llc it, it, the, i i think those facts will come out and they're the right facts to find out definitely and thank you um david uh just for everyone's information and it has been reported that the uh yonkers uh, planning board is considering uh, across the street and about 100 yards north a 16-story building, apartment building, and th those neighbors are fighting it as well. I just thought people would, might want to know. Thank you, David. Um, we've been made aware of that building, and um, Chuck has said in the next few days he's going to look at, at it. I understand it's fair market value. I understand they got a variance to build that. and. Um, you know, it's so close to the city line. Yes, so we're we're watching that. Thank you, um, Dan. Hi, Laura. Um, thank you for the update on Broadway. I, I do have a few questions. You said the facts will come out. Are, are we in communication with the mayor's office of contract services on this to get information as to oh. where that office is with the contract? Yes, we we have written to the mayor's office. That's in um a, a letter from uh. Assemblyman Dinowitz, Councilman Dinowitz, and Community Board Eight, and um, we we just sent that out to find out to, what's going on. Is that to the mayor's office or the mayor's office of contract services, the division? Oh, one went to the mayor. It went to Mayor Eric Adams, and it also went to Brad Lander, and it also went to Director Lisa Flores, Officer Office of Contract Service. Gotcha. So it's my understanding, um, and, and the I conflict of interest board. Gotcha. So it was. It's my understanding, like when we read the contract the last time, that um, they're they're allowed to change the operator um, within the contract. Which you know, again, we still didn't even get information, I guess, from Mox the last time whether or not they had approved right. the contract. So I guess that's like one of the basic questions: Did they ever approve the contract? If they approve the contract, are they? When you say they, do you? Do oh, you I apologize. The mayor's office of contract services must first approve before it goes to the controller's office. So Mox approves, and after Mox approves, then it goes to the controller. That's what I believe the process was. I'm and saying that it's not yet at the controllers, so it sounds like it might still be at Mox. We just, I guess, the the ringing question we've had for like the last year or so is whether or not Mox approved it. And I guess we still don't know, right? That's what we're getting at. We're writing to find right, out. Right, right, right. Right. We're complaining about the process. Uh, we're complaining about this process because there's been a total lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. um, I kept asking Mox, that was Pulo at the time, you may, may recall, um, what is mm -hmm. going on, what is going on? And then he would just write, we have no control with the building. This is a private entity and another private entity is buying it. And, you know, um, maybe oh. Greer, Greer, could you be helpful with this? I know you're on the call. I don't want to put you on the spot, but this process between mm -hmm. Mox and the controller's office, AAPCI never went to the controller's office. Nothing has gone to the controller's office yet. Well, it's my understanding. I think Mox has to approve it first, but I guess where I was going with it, Laura, is one of the other follow-up questions, if, if you could ask if we are in communication or, or if our elected officials are in communication, yeah. is there was a provision in the, in the, and they never gave us the real contract. Right. What they gave us were, you know, copies of what the contract would look like. And there are various sections missing. One of those was a section that dealt with the, the city's ability to change the operator. And we'd asked for that section and all of the requirements and kind of what they could do. And if we could just follow up with whoever we're communicating with to ask for that section again, because obviously, you know, it's important as that's what seems to be occurring right now. They're changing the operator probably within the same contract. Yes. I, you know what? The fact is, does this thing really exist because it never went to the controller's office where it is? Those are, those are absolutely on target. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, I, we will, I will send things out to the board, update you on this. Um, let me find my agenda because. Not um, Laura, I can uh, share the agenda on the screen if you'd like. 
No, 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 it's right in front of me. Just okay. seconds ago. I can't live without that. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe you better share it on the screen. I drop it on the floor. Oh, I found it in all my papers. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, so that was my chair's report. What I did miss was someone from the 50th precinct is here. I got a, a message. Um, Captain Florentino of the 50th precinct. Are you on the call, Captain? Because I had understood that they couldn't send someone tonight and I had kind of skipped that over. Is, is, on. is the captain on? Yes, Laura. Great. Okay. Um, captain, um, I'm just going to uh, welcome you and invite you to give your 50th precinct report. It's noting if the captain is on, uh, you might Florentino, be on mute. Captain, captain your, your microphone is not working. Technology, don't you love it? That is best. <laughs> okay, well, we could circle back with the captain and um, I could, if I don't, you know, just having technical difficulties, we'll, we'll try again. Uh, I'd like to invite um, Councilman Eric Dinowitz to, to, to speak. I know he's on the call and then we'll circle back. Yes, thank you. Is my mic working? I hear you. Okay, good. No technical difficulties, just bad oh. lighting. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, good, good evening, everyone. It's um, as always. It's great to be here. You know, I try to make every community board eight uh, meeting. Um, in addition to all the events throughout the community, um, just a few things that were mentioned. Uh, mentioned the the Billstone co naming. I'm I'm really honored to have uh, passed this co naming th uh, through the council. I'm really looking forward to the ceremony. I hope everyone here uh, who knew Bill. Uh, can come and, and support by 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 attending the ceremony. Um, I won't go into the shelter, but but just to remind everyone here that I, Community Board Eight, and Assembly Member Dinowitz have been working hand in hand in lock in lockstep, supporting each other. Any letter that goes out, any meeting meetings that occur, uh, we've all been on the same page on this, pushing back against uh, this model. This you know everything about the provider um, and the corruption. Uh, we are all on the same page. Uh, something I'm very excited about, very, very, very excited about. If you are uh, a subscriber to my newsletters, you would have seen a playground map. Now, it, it sounds a little weird. The Parks Department doesn't have a map of all the playgrounds. Um, but I, I, I said, that doesn't make sense. Uh, so I partnered with an organization called Beta NYC, and we launched a map of the playgrounds that does not only show you where in New York City are all the playgrounds, which you can search by dragging your mouse. Um, you can search by address. So if you want to see the neighbor, the playgrounds around your house, you're going to your friend's house in, in Manhattan or another part of the Bronx, you have kids, you could see the playgrounds around there. But importantly, um, this is the work we did speaks to something that I care deeply about, which is accessibility. And you can filter by accessibility feature uh, including sensory activities at the playground, including ramps, and importantly, for any parent, comfort stations or accessible comfort stations. And I encourage everyone to go to ericdinowitz.nyc slash playground map, ericdinowitz.nyc slash playground map, uh, to use this really, really valuable tool um, that I, I think is going to help a, a lot of families and, and, and you know, hopefully uh, the board can, you know, maybe in the next parks meeting or uh, can can send it out. Uh, City Council, we passed a few pieces of legislation. Um, I think I, I think I shared with everyone last month that the mayor signed my legislation uh, for students with disabilities uh, moving high school to college. Uh, and and last week or two weeks ago, we voted on bills related to lithium ion batteries. Um, That's right. Anyone who who watches the news have seen terrible fires. These lithium ion batteries have been the sources of fires throughout our city. So the, there's a few bills that we pass and a few bills in the works. Um, they put regulations on the sale of batteries um, and require them to be have a certification 
because the batteries that are exploding or lighting on fire spontaneously aren't, aren't regulated. They have no certification, no safety standards. And we're working on legislation that would allow people who currently have unsafe batteries to swap them out for safer models and do all sorts of education campaigns around these. And we're you know really trying to restrict the sale, but also provide opportunity for especially the del deliveristas who rely on these bikes um, to have the opportunity just to, to cheaply or, or, or for free swap out those batteries. Uh, it is budget season. Um, we're allocating FY24. We're working on that. Um, so we have our citywide budget. Um, we've sent out the community survey. We encourage everyone, it's sent out through email and through social media. We encourage you to fill it out to speak about your, your priorities for citywide budget needs. I had my preliminary budget hearing today. I chair the higher education committee. Um, and, and the cuts to CUNY are just un unconscionable. They're, they're deep, deep cuts. I mean, this is a system that provides social and economic mobility uh, to so many New Yorkers, uh, including my father and including myself. He and I are both CUNY alumni. And one of the important things we revealed in the hearing is not just the moral value of, of a lot of the initiatives in CUNY, like uh, CUNY Reconnect and ASAP and ACE, but the fiscally responsible thing to do with programs like CUNY Reconnect, which um, which get people to come back uh, to college from having been away from college for a while, an investment of $4.4 million um, got essentially tuition money worth $80 million. So even financially, these cuts to these programs, which bring people in and provide support services for students are actually gonna end up costing us more. And I said during a hearing, it's just penny wise and pound foolish. Um, of course, in addition to the CUNY budget and citywide initiatives, we fund important initiatives through discretionary funding. All the, the cleanup services I tell you to call my office about, the plants on Riverdale Avenue, you see uh, new trees and tree pits and tree guards, uh, the, the C, Riverdale Senior Services, uh, Youth Services uh, at the Y. All of these are funded through discretionary funding. And again, I encourage you to reach out um, and make your uh, opinions known about where your essentially your tax dollars should go, what you want to see in the community. We're holding a number of events, uh, Zoom in person. We just had a fire safety presentation um, with the FDNY. We had a tenants rights presentation, provided tools and resources. Um, email my office if you'd like a recording of those uh, and look out for more, uh, more uh, uh, informational events. You know, we've done everything from, as I said, the FDNY to, to coyotes, we've done it all. Um, my office is under construction, so we are, but we'll be at the libraries. Um, so while our office is under construction, um, you can check out on social media or my email newsletter, the dates and times we'll be at your local libraries, including uh, the Riverdale Library and the Kingsbridge Library and the Van Cortlandt Library um, for Community Board 8. Um, so comp uh, two last things, uh, uh, composting distribution this year, um, uh, sorry, composting, compost distribution uh, this year is unfortunately only available in Queens um, uh, unless we sponsor for the district. So we are in the works with sanitation to set up a compost distribution. Uh, we've had a couple of people reach out, but continue to reach out to my office if you are interested in compost. Uh, and I won't mention the DSNY update because that was already uh, announced. Uh, and as always, reach out to my office with, with any, any, any concerns, legislatively, local community related, or especially now budget related. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on to um, Assemblyman Dinowitz. Oh, uh, um, Laura, I just had one question for the council member. And uh, Julia's got her hand raised too. Okay. I'll make it fast. Um, Eric, you were, you and your the assembly member were uh, two of the folks who kicked off the request for a PEP command in Van Cortlandt Park. I know you're on the Parks Committee for the City Council. Um, I wanted to find out how the advocacy is going for that. Um, I, I will tell you parks in general. So a PEP command at Van Cortlandt Park is, is a priority. Um, I will tell you that the parks budget, we got the largest parks budget ever in FY23 last year, and it's not even close to what we wanted. We wanted 1% or $1 billion. So I, I'm on the budget team and we're continuing to fight uh, for funding 
for the parks department, including for the workers. So I have I have no update on that. Just to let you know, I'm going to continue uh, to advocate for um, for a pep command at, at Van Quilton Park. And and uh, I know you didn't ask this, but I I, I do want to answer. I think it's the dog run at the park near your house. Has they they've they've finished doing the ramp there, and I, if if they haven't done it already, they're working on the water fountain. Uh, that you requested in the sunshade. So that was after a visit that you organized. So thank you for organizing that. Um, and so we are we we are trying to get those other things done. Uh, and I will, if I have an update on Pep Command later on, uh, I, I will let you know. But I, I am continuing to advocate for it. Thank you, uh, Julia. Last question. I'm sorry. It's more of a comment, just if it helps as someone who is deeply indebted to CUNY. Um, there was also an article recently, last three or four years, that spoke about the financial advantages for CUNY graduates and how a lot of people, especially in the two-year colleges, were actually able to get their entire family out of poverty with a CUNY degree, um, whether it was an associate's or a bachelor's. So if that information would be helpful, I can get, get it to you um, relatively quickly. Always, always happy to receive information. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Um, good. Okay. Um, I uh, I welcome <clears throat> Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope I'm speaking loudly enough. I'm in a public place, so I don't want to disturb everybody else. We hear you. Um, we were supposed we were supposed to have a foot and a half of snow in Albany, but I would say we got what I would characterize as one of the biggest duds in history, which I guess most people think it's, is a good thing. Anyway, um, we are going to be passing later this week uh, what we refer to as our one house budget resolutions, which will sort of officially open the negotiation among the assembly, the Senate and the governor. And I just wanted to mention a few things that are in it or not in it, just for your information. Um, so the assembly is rejecting uh, the governor's proposal to lift the cap on charter schools. In other words, we're rejecting the possibility of significantly increasing the number of charter schools. The city has not reached its limit and there's still room for expansion. Uh, we're rejecting tuition hikes at CUNY and SUNY, and I am a CUNY graduate, as many of you know, so I'm very happy about that. We have wording in it to which hopefully will lead to some additional rent reform. Uh, what some of us are supporting is uh, legislation known as good cause eviction, which would limit rent increases on non-regulated apartments. Um, we're also raising the personal income tax for the ultra wealthy by a half a point for people between 5 million and 25 million and a half a point up to 11.4 for people whose annual income is above 25 million. And we are also putting off until later on in the session any discussion of changes to the bail laws. Um, so that's that's a few of the things. I also, and I, I, I think the councilman spoke about a few of these things, so I don't want to be repetitive, but um, we, uh, we, I, we totally reject the idea of having this not-for-profit from Westchester slipped in without any real vetting, especially given their um, reputation for the proposed homeless shelter at 6661 Broadway. But we're also having other land use issues. Uh, the proposed charter school expansion, which is uh, they, they want to build a building on West 232nd Street, which is absolutely outrageous and ridiculous. It turns out that the main charter school on 231st and Riverdale Avenue, they went to the Department of Education to lower the number of students in their building, which means they have a lot of empty seats. So why in the world do they need another building with more seats? And one could only speculate that it, it, it's, well, one could speculate, but I will say that the Amber Charter School a block away, uh, which has the same landlord as this new building would have, pays $1.4 million a year, I'm told, to this uh, landlord, uh, which is about 120 plus thousand dollars a month. I mean, that's like incredible. So it seems somebody's making a lot of money. Um, and I guess you've read about the issues that the amalgamated houses are facing. They have a number of issues, but one concerns potential 
for their gas to be turned off to 800 apartments very soon, like at the end of June. So uh, I, we're all working to try to see if we can prevent that from happening. Um, and I'll stop because, as I said, I'm in a public place. I don't want to disturb people for too long. Uh, if there's any questions, fine. Uh, we have time for one question. I'm going to go back to what I Okay. Uh, so, meeting is the highlight of my evening. Well, it sounds like a party's going on. Uh, bon appetit. <laughs> so, I'm, and, I'm and, actually in a restaurant. But. Okay. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for all you do. It's kind of my lunch, actually. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good night, um, everybody. Uh, the captain, uh, it seems that they have solved their audio uh, technical difficulties. So um, let's circle back to that. Um, Captain, uh, are you able to connect with us? Let's see. Um, uh, we can see you, Captain, but we cannot hear you. And it might yeah, be. Yeah, that's what they said. They're having. Okay, if it does not work, I can shoot you guys an email with all the crime stats if you'd like. Yeah, that that would be very helpful. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, but we certainly understand that. Um, so one, if you could hear us, that would be excellent. Um, I also, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Brent Schneider is here from Senator Rivera's office. They have been in the loop on the whole uh, 6661 Broadway issue and uh, willing to support. And I look forward to working with, with your office as well, Brent. Um, and um, let me see. Um, the report from the Bronx Borough President's Office. Um, Alexis, Alexis is on the line. Uh, Alexis Ruiz. Looks like she's on the line, but she's currently muted. I'll ask to unmute. Okay. She might be might have stepped away. I can I can always circle back. You see, I'm not the only one having technical difficulties tonight. <laughs> the host can unmute them. I cannot unmute, but I can ask to unmute. Mm -hmm. Alexis, if you could hear us. Laura, I'll, I'll send her a text, okay? Okay. Um, in the meanwhile, um, we have the treasurer's report next. Scott got extremely ill in the past 24 hours, extremely ill, and he, he cannot make it tonight. Um, he, the uh, treasurer's report was distributed and he asked if there are any questions, please shoot him an email and he will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so. Um, um, Laura, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Luke, Alexis says send her another request. She's having a hard time unmuting. Okay, I will. Okay, I just asked her to unmute. Hello? Alexis. Okay, Alexis. Hello? Alexis? Hey. Good. Hi. Can we you hear me? You. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was we having a hard time. It was like frozen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. I hope that you're all doing well. Um, the latest Borough President's newsletter has been sent out via email, and it's on her website. Uh, if you have any questions on how to access that, please reach out to me. I will place my information in the chat um, if I have access to that. If not, uh, I'll give you my number 718-590-3913. Um, also, I just wanna make a quick update. Uh, if board members are not sure if they're up for reappointment, you can reach out to me directly, uh, but we have sent emails letting everyone know those board members that are up, you should have received um, some type of uh, correspondence, but please let me know I'm sorry, I don't know if I had feedback there. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be here for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you, and thank you for joining. Uh, thank you. I don't see any questions. Um, we don't have anyone. Do we have anyone from the New York City Department of City Planning? I know they are coming to land use this month. I don't think so. No. Okay. No, Laura. Um, before we move on to um, 
committee reports. Uh, Lisa is going to step in as our secretary <laughs> tonight. She's always stepping up um, to please do a roll call. And um, I wanna say that our secretary, Rob Joklowski is in California where he is, uh, uh, does not have any Wi-Fi. He sends his regards. <laughs> okay, uh, Lisa. Okay, everyone. So uh, board members, please be ready to unmute yourselves and uh, let us know that you're here. So Sylvia Alexander. Here. Constance Barnes Watson. Present. Thank you. Bob Bender. Here. Thank you. Uh, is Kelly Buford here? Present. Ah, hey, Kelly. Uh, Chris Calhoun. Here. Great. Uh, I understand Sebastian Chitalopoli is not here, but let me call your name for the record. Sebastian? No. Uh, Lee Chung? Here. Great. Lisa Daub, I'm here. Uh, Ingrid De Leon? Ingrid? We'll come back. Uh, Margaret Della? I don't see Margaret. Margaret Donato. Here. Thank you, Margaret. Moses Asuma. Moses here? No. Uh, Bob Fanuzzi? Mm -hmm. I don't see Bob. Uh, Nick Fazio? Present. Thank you. Steve Fruit? Here. Present. Hey, Steve. Uh, David Gelman? Present. Thank you. Rosemary Ginty? Here. Thank you. Julia Gomez? Here. Thank you. Ed Green? Present. Great. Rashilda Hilliard? I'm here. here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm still here. Great. Uh, and again, we know Bob, Bob Joukowsky is not here. Uh, Myra Joyce? Present. Thank you. Uh, Robert Kaplan? Here. Thank you. And we know that Scott is not here, Scott Croppinger. Uh, Rita Pachtolo? I know Rita is here. We did see her. Can you unmute Rita or no? Yes, good evening. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Chuck Martin? Here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ted Morris? I did not see Ted. Omar Murray? Yeah. Thank you. Dan Patternett? Present. Thanks, Dan. Julie Reyes? No. <laughs> hey, Julie. Yeah. Uh, Georgia Santiago? I know you're here, Georgia. <coughs> or you were? Are you here? Just a reminder to press star six if you're joining from a phone. We'll come back to Georgia, but we know that she's here from earlier. I'm here, I'm uh, here. Thanks, Georgia. Okay, Ron Present. Present. Great, Lauren Spalter. Present. Thank you, Leona Teton. Present. Thank you, hope I got your name pronounced right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Camelia Tepolis. Present. Thank you. Deb Travis. Present. Great. Stephen Vasquez. Did not see him. Sergio Villaverde. Present. <laughs> and Martin Wolpoff. Marty. Here. Great. We're done. Way over a quorum. We're good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry, Laura. I didn't get to say hi, Alina from the mayor's office. Oh, hello. Yes. Did you hear me? No, I I recognized you. <laughs> you I, yeah. No. You know what happened is I as soon as you said my name, I the, the service just dropped out. So yeah, I just wanted to, right. to say thank you for joining. Always. Yes. I just wanted to introduce myself to everyone. I, I see some friendly faces and some I don't know. I'm Alina Dow. I am the Bronx World Director for the Mayor's Community Affairs. Um, I I tried my very best to attend 
all of the meetings. I know that there's a lot of different things happening and I make myself readily available to everyone. Um, I can provide my information, Laura has my information. I was always in contact with Sierra. So um, I extend that same, same sentiment to you all. I do look forward to hearing from you guys. I know we don't have a chat here, but uh, Laura can share my information with everyone. Thank you guys. Very good. Thank you, Marcia, uh, Alina. Alina. Um, committee reports. We'll begin tonight with economic development. Nick. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. Our last meeting was on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, March 7th at Montezuma Restaurant, 119 West Kingsbridge Road. Please refer to our forthcoming minutes. I want to thank uh, Maggie Dominguez and the Dominguez family from Montezuma that has been there probably for over 30 years for hosting us. We have our next commercial corridor walkthrough tentatively scheduled for April 21st. More information will follow. We hope to work also with the Education Committee on coordinating with RKA for a possible cleanup event on 235th and Johnson Avenue. This is just in the preliminary planning phase. I did speak with Sylvia and Ramdot, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with them on this initiative. The Betty Campbell Adams Most Valuable Merchant Award nomination, as you heard from Chair Spalter, pe the period is open March 15th to April 15th. Please refer to the press release that will be going out. And you can also, I believe, you can also go to the website. Luke, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, for information on how to submit nominations. The New York City Economic Development Corporation is offering guided tours of the armory to get inside the armory, which is probably really fascinating. I will ask the office to send out the link. There is a sign up link that you can pick different times. They have lots of dates to choose from. And lastly, we heard from Seth Kaplan during the gallery session. I just wanna take an opportunity quickly to thank uh, Public Safety Chair Ed Green, Chair Spalter, Pablo Romano <clears throat> for their efforts to redress what looks to me like a, an honest mistake by the State Liquor Authority. And I know Seth took full responsibility, but if you know Seth, that's just the kind of person that he is. But from what I understand, this was a mistake uh, in Albany, and I wanna really uh, extend a, uh, uh, my gratitude to Ed Green, Chair Spalter, and Pablo for really stepping into action and doing what they could uh, to to mitigate this, the damage that's been caused by them not being able to serve alcohol. That's my report, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. I, I also want to mention that Assemblyman Dinowitz and State Senator Jackson um, wrote letters of support for PK. Um, we wrote, we reached out to them and uh, they they did that and they called SLA. So I'm hoping with all that support, we'll have smooth sailing you know, going forward. Um, okay, thank you, uh, Nick. Education, libraries, and cultural affairs, Sylvia. Well, I'm muted. <laughs> Sylvia? Sylvia, Sylvia you, is uh, muted. Yeah, somebody muted, muted me. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I hope that you've received my uh, minutes. They went out a little bit late. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, I um, Today, uh, Rosemary, who um, is uh, very helpful many times with the Independent Budget um, Office down in uh, Manhattan, um, it, it seems that the preliminary uh, budget has eliminated hundreds of vacant uh, school safety positions. Those are the guards in the schools. Uh, following more than 20% decline in safety agents staffing in cities, public schools over the last three years. Uh, that's very alarming because um, the um, Issues that come up in the uh, mostly the high schools uh, down at JFK and um, uh, the adjoining school 368 
um, have issues all the time and um, cutting back on the uh, safety uh, officers that are in the school, although they're not um, armed or anything like that, but they are also at the entrances to many of the schools in the community, uh, I guess across the city, uh, serve a very important uh, function and eliminating uh, these positions over the next three years uh, is um, an issue that I think is, is uh, uh, foolish, but um, I'm not one to say. So um, the next meeting is on March 28th and um, that's my report. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Um, Okay, um, Environment and Sanitation, Camelia Tepolis. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, we had held our uh, meeting of February uh, again um, in hybrid with participation both in person from the office. Uh, thanks to David for joining us as, as we discussed the first round of uh, budget priorities as well as people on uh, hybrid. We are uh, having our next meeting tomorrow. Uh, probably the biggest uh, item on our agenda other than the budget priorities is coordination with um, the DEP staff uh, overseeing progress on the Tibet's Brook project. As you may remember back in, I think it was end of January, the mayor confirmed that the land acquisition um, is approved at 11.2 million from CSX. So the plans proceed uh, pro uh, appropriately with, with um, the group led by DP to continue the design of, of this forthcoming uh, park and including the daylighting piece. Um, we were somehow omitted. I don't know what happened uh, in, the, in the last, in the meeting of December 14, uh, the community board was not notified of that meeting, but the, um, of the TAG group, it's called the Tibet's advisory group of the, DP, but um, and we learn now that their forthcoming meeting is likely to be uh, towards end of April, including a side tour. Uh, however, we are a little bit disappointed in that that we were planning a joint parks and EN, uh, environment and sanitation committee meeting just focused on this project for them to be able to present to us before we can draft a resolution. I thank Laura for the persistent outreach to them in trying to find a date. We hope for for uh, May so that um, we all community board eight members have the opportunity to, to uh, listen directly from DEP on this. And uh, other than that, all that are uh, willing and interested in, in um, joining us are uh, welcome to join us tomorrow at the meeting. And um, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I have a call tomorrow with the coordinator for the daylighting on DEP side and, and parks. And we'll, uh, we'll nail that day tomorrow and get it out as quickly as possible. Um, thank you, Camelia, for your, thank you, Laura. your efforts. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Omar, Health Hospitals and Social Services. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good to see you tonight. So our last meeting was last Wednesday, and we discussed three topics. Um, we discussed our budget priorities, which we still have to finalize at the next meeting. We also had the Department of Social Services that came to speak about the various services that are available and what we can do to apply for them online and the various assistance they have, such as rent, food stamps, and all that good stuff. And we also had some representative from NASNA, the New York State Nurses Union, who came to speak about their recent strike and what's going on further because as you know your contract is up in two years and they have to begin renegotiation so we are going to invite them back to the next meeting to speak about what's going on i know that committee board it doesn't have a hospital but it's good to know what is going on outside of that frame so with that said our next meeting will be next month and we will be discussing budget priorities and we will be inviting back nasna to come and speak with us Thank you. Um, I think that April, we'd have to find another date, Omar. I think Passover falls on your meeting in April. Yeah, I will I will work with Luke and um right. Diana. We'll find another we'll find right. another date. Yes. Right. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um housing. Lee. 
Meet John. Uh, my report is very short. We did not have a meeting in February. We had no quorum. Our next meeting is March 27th at 7 p.m. We will be discussing the uh, FY 24 and 25 and any other new business and old business that um, haven't been resolved yet. Probably local law 97 and local law 152. Which right. impacts, by the way, everyone who lives in a multiple dwelling, whether it's a rental, a co-op, or a condo. Right. You may want to say a minute about what, what that is with the... Um, oh, this city. is um, a local law. 152 was passed in 2016 by the city council, which required a Department of Building inspection of gas lines. And if there were rotten or not up to standard gas lines, they had to be replaced, which most buildings did do. Um, I know my co-op did it three years ago. Local Law 97 was passed in 2020, I believe, which states that by 2024, all buildings 25,000 square feet or larger must start a program to convert from gas to electric, which is what is happening at Amalgamated right now. So, and also uh, some city council members and state senators have had four public forums. In fact, um, myself, Luke and Julie uh, registered to go to one in Manhattan that council member Gail Brewer is holding on the 21st. So uh, we'll report back to the committee about that at our um, monthly board meeting in March. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. I just, wanna, I just wanna add the uh, financial uh, strain on many buildings and uh, and landlords will be enormous with this. There are enormous. There, there are pro processes to yeah. um, ameliorate that, and that's I think what we're going to try to find Focus out when on. we attend the forums. Right. I, I have a question. Wait, I just want to say something. Sure. Um, the board reached out to um, Department of uh, Buildings because they were doing informational sessions on Local Rule ninety seven and other boroughs. And after we contacted them, uh, thank you, Luke, uh, they're coming to the Bronx and they'll let us know what the date of that is. We've also reached out to um, Councilman Dinowitz to have a forum on this because we know this is gonna be a huge issue. So I just wanna mention that and thank you, Lee, because you know for, for your work towards this and um, you know we'll keep you posted. Um, somebody just said something, but I don't know if they're a board member. Yes. Myra, Myra had a question. Yeah, oh, I have a Myra. question. Okay, okay. Um, Myra, go ahead. It's about the um, Inflation Reduction Act that the president that the president signed that includes a huge amount of money to be allocated throughout the country for people to upgrade their gas appliances and wiring to electric. Right. So I've been Perfect. sort of in, in touch with um, Eric Dinowitz's office about it. Not Eric, I'm sorry. Jeff Dinowitz's office, um, trying to find out if this money was allocated and how it's being spent. And the response that I got was that they have no information on it. I think it's brand new and they, I don't oh. think they have any sense of the uh, process yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that these forums, as they start multiplying, more and more information will come out. Mm -hmm. Great. We should, we'll you. reach out to our federal electors you know, because if that's- Yeah, it's gonna have vote, a trickle down effect. It, it, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll reach out to Congressman Torres, definitely. Thank you, Myra, thank you. Um, moving on to land use, Chuck. Chuck, are, are you muted? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Um, I have three things to report. The first one's a bit troublesome. Um, as you will recall, uh, land use were ported out, and I believe the board has adopted a resolution on SNAD. Um, what we have been seeing over the course of the past number of months is that the Department of Buildings, rather than issuing violations when SNAD is violated, has in many cases referred to a unadopted, illegal um, procedure that they have internally adopted without having published, taken comments or the like, 
uh, called the Homeowners Relief Act, uh, under which instead of issuing violations, when a tree is coming down, a whole bunch of trees are coming down, uh, they just send them a letter if it's near a house, involves a house. Um, and if at the end of 30 or 60 days, nothing has been done to uh, ameliorate that condition. I don't know how you ameliorate it when the trees are down, but that's a different issue. Um, they then will issue at that point a violation, assuming that they can ever prove it at that stage in the game. Um, we have called to their attention that this doesn't make sense. There's no provision for that in the zoning resolution. There's no provision authorizing that in the building code or anywhere in the city charter. Um, they've taken umbrage that we questioned them on that. Um, and so uh, I suspect we're going to wind up with a confrontation on that issue. And I wanted to give you an early heads up in the resolution that was adopted. There was a provision that if the board approves it at the time, uh, we're going to have to go to court and have this re uh, home relief thing declared illegal and to mandamus them to comply with the law. Um, it's troublesome. We've had a history of the city of New York under uh, the former mayor trying to repeal SNAD. We've had city planning on occasion in the past refusing to enforce SNAD or misenforcing it. Uh, and now we have it over at the building department. There's an issue here. Either we are going to have an environmental program for this town or we're not. Either we want trees or we don't. Um, there's a procedure, a lawful procedure to remove a tree. It isn't terribly complicated. Nobody wants to follow it. And so they go ahead. I give you the heads up because uh, I know um, David Gelman and a number of other people have been watching this situation in a number of places. And there's a motive in some instances, and I want you to know it. If there are trees and if there are protected trees on the property and somebody wants to get it rezoned to do something on that land, they have to go and deal with those trees going forward. If the trees are down, they say, what do I have to do? I can go build up to R6, R8, or whatever I can build. So it's a real problem. And I just want to tell you that if you see in those areas, in any of the areas you're involved with, any of the environmental impacts that are a violation of SNAD, tree removal, ditches, et cetera, in the SNAD area, uh, please let the board office know and we'll, we'll start to move in on it. Um, so that's issue number one. If there's any question, I'll do with that one now. Okay. The second issue um, is that um, we have coming up a number of landmarks preservation claims that are going to be uh, coming before the board. Uh, there will be a hearing on at least two of them at the meeting on the 23rd. Um, and we'll figure out where that's going. Those, are, those two, as I recall, are both in Fieldston. And lastly, not lastly, but penultimate, um, on April the 3rd at our second meeting, our first meeting will be on the 23rd, which has a heavy agenda. The second meeting will be our regular meeting on Monday, April 3rd, we are going to present a report and a revised resolution on affordable housing. Um, I'm going to try and keep the uh, agenda for that meeting as sparse as possible so that we can really go into this. Uh, we are going to be faced sometime in the next month or two, without question, by city planning's proposals for uh, rezoning of vast portions of the area and changes in the law in terms of construction. Um, this stuff has to, if you have a position, whether pro or con 
uh, affordable housing. We've just got to get it out so that we the community knows where we stand on the subject. Understand affordable housing is not public housing. Affordable housing can be people who have an income anywhere from $36,000 to $250,000. They're all called affordable housing. And you'll see all of that in the report. The last item is on the 23rd, we will have a Zoom meeting, the bulk of which will, I suspect, be taken up by visitation issues. Uh, I will not chair that. There will be someone else chairing it and that portion of it. Uh, and we'll deal with the visitation issue. It's my understanding, um, based on the conversations I had a week or 10 days ago, the Tishman Spy will have one or two representatives there ready to answer whatever questions people have. If there are no questions, that's it. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Uh, moving on to law, rules, and ethics. Marty. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, first, with respect to land use, uh, the building. Oh, I'm sorry, Marty. I didn't... You do it on purpose. Uh, 3745, no, I Riverdale, <laughs> 3745 Riverdale Avenue, uh, to my best of my knowledge, the building has been topped off. So what you see in terms of the size of the building, that's going to be it. They have begun working on the skin to close things up and they have, uh, uh, the, the, there are two uh, major things they wanna complete. One is a, uh, a deck, on the third floor, the back of the building. And the second is they are gonna begin uh, the construction interior uh, for the elevator system. Uh, electricians, plumbers, and air conditioning people are at work already working their way in the building so that they can begin com completion. So uh, we'd be happy to see that building completed and the construction, uh, the construction nuisance basically to the rest of the community uh, be gone. So I'm happy to report that. Uh, law, rules and ethics. I just want to keep this short one item. I uh, sent to the board office and the board sent out uh, today uh, the, la the latest in the New York City Le Council legislative calendar. You have all of the items that are being considered or have already been considered by the council. And I note again, two important things I highlight. Uh, there are three city council representatives. I highlight what they have introduced. Um, and secondly, that the thing is extremely voluminous and no one should attempt to print out the entire thing unless they really wanna have a copy, but uh, enjoy reading. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to Parks and Recreation, Deck. Uh, may I jump back in for one moment? I'd like sure. to find out if anybody here has a strong view on an issue. You will recall when the Broadway homeless issue arose, we called upon the legislators and the mayor of the city of Yonkers, which is a about two, 300 feet away from that site to advise us as to their position on that issue. And they were very cooperative and they stepped up and stated where they came from on this issue. Uh, this is under the problem. We now have a reverse compliment request from people in Yonkers. And that is that there is a proposal for the construction of a large apartment house on the Yonkers side of the border. And there are people who have questions about it. Is there anyone who has an objection to our taking a look at that and deciding whether or not to bring it back to land use and then the board as to a position? It is apparently smack dab uh, near us. Carn Avenue, something like that. Does anybody has a direct objection to it. If not, we're going to take a look and then report back. All right. 
So, uh, Chuck, this is Deb. Um, I, I do not object, and I have also heard uh, people have concerns about the shadows coming into Ben Cortland Park from the project, set, uh, from the project, and uh, also the construction staging and what will be done since they're um, adjacent to Ben Cortland Park. So, I think it would be a good thing to for you to to look into. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay. Thank you. For, I apologize. No, 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 no. All good. Um, public safety, Ed. Oh, wait, wait, you got to do parks first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, 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 and I know oh, you have a resolution as well. I have a resolution, so <laughs> you can't you can't get rid of me that fast. Oh, Ooh. right, right, right. Um, okay, Deb, you're on. So. Uh, Luke, do you want to start with the resolution? <clears throat> So the resolution pertains to um, uh, pickleball. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll read the, uh, therefore we, be it resolved since it's a pretty simple resolution. Um, therefore be it resolved that the Parks and Recreation Committee approves the plan for installing the pickleball court as presented to the committee with the understanding the DPR will return to the committee for further discussion if there are any substantive alterations to the plan that was presented. Um, long story short, the, the Parks Department came back to the committee and um, uh, last last meeting, and they intend to uh, they, they brought a proposal to um, install a pickleball court on top of two of the handball courts that are in the Riverdale playground, um, and uh, which is adjacent to the Hudson Manor Terrace. Um, the the plan looks thoughtful. Um, they've done a lot of uh, research into the uh, space. And that the, the even though the two handball courts will be um, uh, taken over by, by this pickleball court, there will still be two handball courts remaining for people to use. Um, the, the, those particular handball courts in that particular neighborhood are, are not heavily used. And so this was a better alternative than using the, um, the tennis courts um, in Seton Park, which was the first suggestion. So um, with that, uh, I guess if there's any, are there any questions? I don't see any hands. Um, let me uh, ask, is there anyone opposed to this resolution? Please raise your hand. I do not see any hands. I'll wait another few seconds because of all the technical. Okay, is there anyone abstaining? Okay, so it unanimously passes. Great, and then I just have a couple of uh, pieces of news. One is that you'll remember last month, we voted to support a PEP uh, resolution, um, supporting a PEP command in Ben Cortland Park. I'm happy to say the Community Board 7 has, uh, the Community Board 7 Parks Committee has passed a resolution to support our resolution. So um, that it was really wonderful to hear their support and they're uh, strongly enthusiastic about um, the work that we've done. Um, also in um, Fort Four Park, uh, a, a comfort station that is very long awaited um, will begin construction on April 17th. So um, there will be some parts of that park that will be closed um, for probably a good part of the next year. But um, we've been waiting for that comfort station for a very long time. And so um, I think everybody's pretty excited that it finally we're breaking ground. Um, I wanted to announce at the Riverdale Park, uh, there will be a tree planting on Sunday, April 2nd from 9 a.m. to noon um, through the New York City Park Stewardship Program. It's part of their um, uh, efforts to reduce some desire lines and paths that, were, that are running through this forever wild park that, um, that are causing some areas to be kind of trampled and to become kind of hangout areas with a lot of trash. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a cleanup effort to kind of uh, remove those desire lines and now they'll be planting new native species. And so anybody is welcome. Um, uh, you can just go to the New York Park Stewardship uh, website to sign up. And finally, our, our next meeting is going to be on March 29th at 7 p.m. It will be one week later than it normally is um, due to Ramadan. And that's it. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Um, Adev? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, David. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. What is a desire line? Oh, so desire lines are um, trails that are made informally by people walking from one spot to another. So in Forever Wild Parks, they can just they're just the trampled, well-worn paths to different spots in the park. So um, the 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 nat natural resources group has been trying to remove some of those where they uh, just kind of lead to 
like areas where people are just partying and to make it um, a little bit more native and keep people on the paths on the, on the actual proper formal trails. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. you see the same actually in Van Cortlandt Park. There's efforts to remove desire lines where also they kind of lead to confusion where people don't know where the actual path is because there seems to be another trail going off someplace. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, seeing no other hands. Uh, thank you, Deb. Uh, we'll move on to public safety. Ed. We also have some resolutions. You're muted, Ed. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, so at our February 21st meeting, we had four uh, SLA applications come before us. Three were for renewals and one was for a new application. One was for uh, Wave Hill at 675 West 252nd Street. One was for on Bielbach at 445 West 238th Street. Uh, another was for New Tokyo House at 5648 Riverdale Avenue. And the new application was for Mama Wana Cafe Prime at 3541 Avenue and the owner signed a 2 a.m. agreement. Um, closing agreement for the first year. So um, just to give it a little context, we did not have a quorum, so we could not have an official vote. So I wanna, uh, I wanna bring for these four, I wanna, I have a motion to, uh, to offer these resolutions um, for a vote from the floor. Do we have a second? I will second. 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 And, and, and also, I, I'll I'll just say, just to give it context, that the 50th precinct stated they were unaware of any prior notable disturbances or complaints at any of these establishments. And uh, I'd like to vote. I, I have another re resolution as well, but I'd like to vote on all these uh, together if there's no objections to that. Okay. Um, is there anyone opposed to... Um, the set of renewals. Please raise your hand. Okay, is there anyone abstaining? Okay, then uh, they pass um, unanimously by the full board. Um, okay. Let continue. Okay, so we, we have another, um, as you saw before, uh, Seth Kaplan, who appeared at our gallery session, and Nick Fazio also spoke a little about this situation. Um, we have, I, I, I have want to bring this to the floor from the floor also. I'm just going to read this out so everybody understands the full context of this. Um, so, whereas the New York State liquor license of P and K's Grill Inc., located at 170 174 West 231st Street, expired on 2-28-23. Whereas Seth Kaplan, owner of P&K's Grill Inc. states he had not received the SLA advisory notice for his renewal. Whereas a representative of the State Liquor Authority stated the agency would grant P&K's Grill Inc. an extension before their application was reviewed on the condition that Bronx Community Board 8 issue them a waiver of the 30-day notice. Whereas Seth Kaplan of P&K's Grill Inc has requested a waiver of the remainder of the 30 day notice to appear before the public safety committee so he can file a renewal application for a liquor, wine, beer, and cider license with SLA. Whereas Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz and Councilman Eric Dinowitz have written the State Liquor Authority requesting the SLA renewal for PNK's Grill Inc. be expedited Whereas Seth Kaplan has agreed to attend March 21st Public Safety Committee meeting to have his SLA application reviewed. Whereas representatives of the 50th Precinct stated there have been no notable complaints or reports of disturbances at PNK's Grill Inc. located at 170-174 West 231st Street. Therefore, be it resolved, Bronx Community Board 8 supports a waiver of the remainder of the 30 day notification requirement and the renewal of PNK Grill Inc. Uh, liquor license. And I, I just wanna add to that also, we got a last minute letter from Senator Jackson also urging SLA to um, grant them the waiver that was not included in that uh, uh, in, in this resolution, but I felt it was noteworthy to just mention that. 
Uh, I think Laura mentioned it also before. So I, I also want to bring this. Uh, I have a motion to bring this uh, resolution for a vote. Do we have a second? Second. Second. OK, um, I don't see any hands for any uh, questions. So is, is there anybody um, opposed to the resolution um, for PKs? Please raise your hand, anyone opposed? I don't see any hands. I hear a horrible noise. Though. Is there anyone abstaining? Please raise your hand. Okay, uh, unanimously passed by the full board and we will be in touch with SLA tomorrow morning. Great, thank you, Laura. And um, I'm not quite sure we have holidays coming up. So the, the date of our next public safety meeting is a little uncertain right now, but as soon as we figure out a date, we'll, we'll get it on the calendar. And um, that's all I got unless anybody has any questions. Perfect, thank you, Ed, for all your, your work on this. It's, it's been a journey. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to traffic and transportation. Um, Kelly, and I think we also have a resolution there. Good evening, everyone. Um, I refer everyone to the TNT minutes of the February 16 meeting. Our next meeting will be this coming Thursday at March 16th at 7 p.m. Um, I also would like to uh, encourage the community and the board members to refer to the website and the CB8 social media platforms regarding several advisory notices that are posted throughout the week that will impact um, each neighborhood within the community board district. And with that, um, we can move forward then with the first uh, set of resolutions that the TNT passed at the February 16 meeting. Um, this is the street activities permit request of Riverdale Y. Uh, Sunday market, as everyone um, may be familiar. Uh, Riverdale Y each year holds holds a Sunday market, and the kickoff this year will be at eight, on April second. Their last uh, they held a similar event on May twenty in May of twenty twenty two, and the resolution before you. Um, I will read the actual resolution and not the preamble. Um, therefore, be it resolved that the Traffic and Transportation Committee of Community Board 8 Bronx supports the issuance of a permit to the Riverdale Wise Sunday Market for the full street closure on Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, on Johnson Avenue between West 235th Street and West 236th Street for the sole purpose of operating a one time pop up farmer's market. Does anyone have any questions regarding the proposed resolutions? Okay, I don't see any hands. Uh, mm -hmm. Therefore, I'll continue with calling the vote. Uh, is there anyone opposed to the resolution? Please raise your hand. Is there anyone abstaining? Okay, Marty is abstaining. Is there anyone else abstaining? No, I'm not abstaining. I just want to point out that the oh. resolution is be resolved, not the uh, TNT committee, but board eight. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. When it when it goes from committee to the full board, um, we have to always change that. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so uh, there was no one opposing. I don't see anyone abstaining, so it's approved unanimously. Okay. Thank you. I think you have one more. Yes. Thank you. Um, the next um, item is the request for the street naming um, near 251st Street and Broadway um, in, uh, in honor of Betty Campbell Adams and Lloyd Adams, um, proprietors of Lloyd's Carrot Cake Bakery. And I will say that we did, um, we had a very nice presentation from the family and the request for the street naming has received support from council member Dinowitz's office, as well as three um, of the um, organizations within the community. And it also received overwhelming support from many community members, including several board members. So if you can scroll down to the uh, resolution, Luke, that would be helpful. Thank you. So 
Again, we, we propose to rename the uh, crosswalk at six, at the intersection of 251 and Broadway. And it reads, the resolution reads thusly that the traffic light controlled east-west crosswalk located at 6115 Broadway between West 251st Street and Manhattan College and, and, and Broadway be renamed Betty and Lloyd Adams Way. Okay, I don't see any hands. Any questions? Discussion? Okay, is anyone opposed to the resolution? I don't see any hands. Anyone abstaining? Okay, so it passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, and that's all I have from TNT. Thank you, everyone. Okay, um, moving on to youth. Uh, please see my minutes from February, right? We're still in March. Um, and I just want to flag for everyone that today was sent out the application for both the Yankee Award and the Comeback Kid Award. So if you know someone who meets criteria, please send them over. The more the merrier. We're happy to uh, consider as many candidates as possible. Thank you and have a good evening. Great. And we'll put that criteria, we'll put that up on our website, uh, social media, Julia. Yes, I believe Pablo sent out a blast today, but um, uh, if it's not up tomorrow, please let us know. I'm sure right. we will rectify that immediately. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, thank you, Julian. And moving on to aging. Uh, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, we just had our meeting yesterday, uh, but we were able to actually finish our uh fiscal year 25 budget requests. So we'll be turning that into uh, the committee. Uh, and with that, we'll celebrate by not having meeting in April. So I was wondering actually, did you at all discuss the uh, possible restructuring of our committees that we talked about in the um, executive committee meeting? Our meeting is actually coming up this Monday, so we have not had a chance, but it is on our agenda. I promise to bring it up. Great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, Luke, could you bring up the, um, the other, th besides finalizing our budget requests, we also discussed in our committee um, a possible restructuring for the board to start considering. Uh, it's really to form a new committee for community engagement uh, that focuses on the well-being of the community and the social engagement of our neighbors, which seems to be very important right now. Um, I see a hand up already, but David, let me finish. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, it, it's, it's basically the, the purpose is to support our community centers who in turn give tremendous support to our youth, to our older adults, and to all ages in between. Uh, it's to be able to reach out and get other groups involved with the board and issues in our community. So it's a, an outreach and it's engagement uh, a committee and it also supports volunteerism. It also supports veterans who give service to our country. And again, we wanna celebrate that as well as uh, individuals in our community who volunteer and give so much support. Uh, you know, and, and with that, since it's a volunteer community, uh, volunteerism promotion uh, and engagement, we also want, uh, we think, I think <laughs> it will be great to um, also consolidate some of the wards within this committee. Um, we can, we, this is for discussion. Um, so far, it, you know, I, I encourage people to listen to the recording that will come out soon from the aging committee, as well as at the executive committee. Um, it, you won't see that much about what was actually discussed in the executive minutes. It's a very brief thing. Uh, you know, it's just so it's within that. So we'll have the aging committee, the youth committee, the special committee on veterans, but it is, and, and awards, but it is a community engagement committee. We want people to be part of the community and to get involved with the board. The second part is a renaming uh, for health hospitals and social services to community health and facilities. Um, 
you can take a look at that. It was in the packet. Uh, it, um, you know, I did a little research on what other boards are doing, but it's really the same old, same old stuff. So, you know, let's look forward and, and sort of lead the initiative to do what's right for our community. And with that, I'll, I'll leave it. And I think David, you had a question or comment. Uh, yes, uh, Lou, could you roll David back up? And then uh, yeah, right there, that's fine. Um, the current committees are aging, youth and uh, veterans, and it's to support our community centers to enhance life of older adults, adults and youth. <laughs> Did you mean to say veterans? Well, rather than adults? also, but we don't have community centers that specifically uh, support veterans, but veterans is definitely part of it. It's also to make it more sustainable. Uh, again, right now we have to renew the veterans committee every year. Let's build it into this since it's engagement and it's service and both seem to fit nicely together. Also, all of these committees, um, you know, issues of all of the other standing committees affect these groups. So, um, you know, so definitely there should be partnership within this community engagement committee, as well as the um, all the other committees on the board. Okay, well then who is yeah. not an older adult, an adult or a youth? Kids, I guess, but you know, it, <laughs> we can include kids too, but it's, it's, it's to support aging youth, veterans, and you know, it came up before some people, what about me? We have other people in the community. Um, we have a lot of new groups. That's why the engagement and the outreach is so important. We have groups popping up now that are trying to build community, something Bronx for Bronx or B for B or whatever. There's, there's other groups because I think people feel the need for connection now to turn this into a community. So I don't want to neglect Middle-aged people also, <laughs> or families. So that, does that I, help? I, I support your, your idea of engagement. I think it's a great idea. I just am puzzled about older adults, adults, and youth. Um, right. That's mm -hmm. all. Uh, you may want to think about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want to belabor it. Centers, community centers currently focus. We have our adult centers, and we have to keep a focus on that, keep a focus on youth outside of education. but you know, just sort of, you know, helping use it all other areas and, and endeavors. And, um, but, you know, why we have neighborhood house that has a lot of programs for adults as well, or the why, or Kingsford Heights, whether it's food issues or, um, that's about it. <laughs> Camelia? Uh, Camelia. Camelia? Yes, just wanted okay. to, to, to thank again uh, Lisa for putting the work into this and sharing it, uh, it first in exec, where I, I would just share with the full board that there was uh, fairly positive feedback. Um, Lisa, I will be very direct here and, and, and say, because strictly of the names of the committees, um, this is a bylaws change it's section c uh six uh, article six section one so lisa i i i i hope i hope that you will pursue this very clearly and immediately with the the internal process uh going uh to the law rules and ethics committee where i'm a frequent uh uh, attendant and having had some experience with uh, challenging bylaws earlier this year, uh, I strongly uh, uh, advocate for you to go and have this presentation so that we proceed with sort of formal feedback from LRE, even though LRE is extremely shy to put it uh, gently with their feedback to all kinds of law rules and ethics issues we have lately. Um, but Lisa, please pursue it. We are in we, we are in March. We have it has to pass twice in the board if LRE gives a positive recommendation. So it's April, um, uh, May, June that we have at our disposal. So I just want to, again, strongly, first of all, thank you, because you do shift focus in exactly the way that is needed, meaning from age groups or a special category to the overall engagement of the community board. And I do think that the step that you are taking is very substantive to, to the impact uh, of, of this board within the community and to the like public trust that is extended to us. So so please tell me yes or no. I mean, I of, of just asking, are you planning to take it to LRE, please? 
Well, actually, yeah. Uh, thanks, Camelia. Um, actually, yeah, we definitely know this is a bylaws change, and uh, we just wanted to throw it out first for people and for the committees to think about it and discuss it. Then we go to LRE with feedback, possibly some tweaks, and uh, then it would take two votes uh, as presented, you know, two board votes to go forward with it. Uh, we are in a transitional air, uh, position right now. We have members uh, leaving the board. We have new members coming on soon and we'll have elections in June. I would love to see this happen by June. I don't know that it will, but um, thank you for supporting it. Um, I, I think having fresh eyes um, is good. You know, take take a fresh look at what we're doing. Um, okay, Bob Bender. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, at, at the executive uh, committee meeting, um, there was a there was a lot of positive reaction to what uh, what Lisa is proposing. You know, we have not looked at the committee structure for some period of time, and uh, I think, and, and everybody else at the executive meeting thought that uh, it, it's it's a great idea to look at our committee structure and see if it still makes the most sense, to see if it should be restructured in some way, to see if exactly the conversation that Lisa has begun, and as you can see from all the hands, um, you know, this, uh, there's a lot of interest in this, and, and this is the beginning of a conversation. You know, whether by June we'll have come to some uh, conclusion about it, I don't know. But, the, you know, the next step in the process is, is I think, for each of the committee chairs um, to look at, at uh, his, his or her committee, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, that, you know, and and determine, uh, you know, could there be could there be some realignment of some of the committees? Elisa uh, proposed one uh, alignment, as as she also notes in her resolution, uh, on some community boards, education and youth are combined in a single committee. So there's lots of different options here, um, but this is very much a conversation worth having, and um, yeah, I think we're all grateful to Lisa for starting it. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Leona. Yeah, I'm I'm curious, especially about this merger of aging youth and special committee on veteran services. I think that at least my major concern would be the very, very broad scope of this committee, mm -hmm. because we've we are David mentioned that this would basically cover try to serve all of the people from the elderly people down to the youth. And I know that I'm, I'm also like on that note, I'm not sure where you would draw the line between youth and kids because the youth committee, a lot of our meetings center basically around high school, middle school, which would technically be considered kids. So I wonder where you would draw the line there. And also, do you think that a committee this broad would be effective? There's definite, I think there's definite room to restructure the committees. But I don't know if this is the best way. Yeah, Leona, that's a, a great question. I mean, my concern from aging is that aging would be ignored. Um, you know, so we all have concerns, and hopefully, it's built into the structure that's finally put together. Um, my feeling is, if we support the centers, that sometimes it's the same center that supports aging and youth. So you could alternate focus on meetings, for example. Four meetings will be more focus on aging or youth or whatever, but that's a great question. And, and that is why, you know, it came up a possibility of adding new uh, health to this, but you know, it's, you're right, it could get too, too big, um, but great question. And one of the things to discuss, um, Julia. I just also wanted to bring up that one of the things um, I haven't heard mentioned yet is that with the amount of committees that we currently have, it does kind of divide intentionality and in that those who, uh, I'll speak for myself, as a social worker, I'm worried about people. That is my primary charge professionally for the last <clears throat> amount of years. Um, so I do think this committee would do, would one, reduce the number of committees. And as we all know, you know, we have a mandate to be a uh, member of a certain number of committees. Um, I think there is some flexibility. I hear the concerns about the broad scope, but I think, you know, with the structuring of said committee, you know, we could make sure that on that particular um, agenda, 
that youth has a place, that aging has a place, that veterans have a place, that adults have a place, you know, these are rolling standard. It could be structured in such a way that all of these identities or all of these competing stakeholders could be seen, heard, and evaluated in one place um, that maybe, you know, I, I can speak for youth. We've had a hard time getting committee members. Um, for those of you who've been here with me, my first meeting, it was me sitting alone in a community center. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think this would possibly help address this. And to Bob's point, you know, I think this could be the beginning of a larger discussion. Um, so I do think that there are a lot of positives. While there are a lot of details that we need to really seriously consider how we're going to address, there are a lot of positives that would be addressed through this type of restructuring. Thank you. Um, uh, Marty, and then uh, Bob Kaplan. Yeah, I want to thank Camilla for concern for my committee. But as she knows from the executive committee, this is an opening, opening for discussion. This is not a resolution. And so the comments made tonight and the comments that we made in the near future will help develop what a resolution ought to look like. And then LRE will consider it. So uh, I thank her for her concern. And I also thank Lisa for bringing this up and uh, all the efforts that she has done uh, in the last several years. Um, and I said it before, I thank her again for the fact that we finally had a, a procedures uh, resolution passed concerning uh, hybrid meetings. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, Rabbi Bob Kaplan. Sure, thank you very much. Um, I, I certainly appreciate the need to reassess committees. That's something that's healthy. Um, it's something that needs to be done on a regular basis within the context of any organizational structure, um, considering how you need to meet the challenges of today, not yesterday. Uh, my one issue uh, of concern is that as this begins to build out, uh, and I wanna echo what I think I've heard before, is that uh, some of the stuff can get lost in the sauce, so to speak. What I mean by that is that uh, particularly uh, you know, things around aging, um, there was a mention before about how you would combine um, uh, centers of delivery uh, that deliver to youth and deliver to aging. Well, it's my understanding um, from the NORC work that I've done and the NORC work that I've done in the past that uh, a relatively small percentage of uh, seniors in a community are serviced by, in any one particular community, are serviced by formal centers. Um, and that the majority of seniors aging out in the community, uh, that was the uh, whole thought behind something like a, a neighborhood based in uh, are not aligned with uh, any formal services and therefore need other structures. Um, they could easily get subsumed in, in uh, uh, various different debates around other populations. So while this is being explored, and again, I think it's a healthy thing to do, while it's being explored, there needs to be some real defined uh, uh, parameters on how time is spent mm -hmm. and what are the uh, going to be the uh, requirements of paying attention to various different groups within the context of any restructuring that, that comes about so that a group does not get overlooked as uh, often does happen within any of these processes. All right. Thank you, Bob. And I mean, that's a big concern of mine. I'm very involved with the aging community. And uh, that is one reason why the engagement and outreach is so important uh, with the uh, different religious organizations and other organizations that, you know, the centers don't reach. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, uh, Bob Tanuzzi and then Sergio. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for those considering this, I just offer some background and context. Um, the community board is not any organization. It's a city agency subject to the city charter and its requirements for co-eterminality. So these committees were constructed to be um, co-eterminous with budgets and needs delivered by um, committees, agencies of the city of New York. So obviously DIFAS 
Um, so as I, I'm being agnostic on the reorg, but I am saying that each committee is set up like every other committee to be able to retain that direct relationship with the city agency. For, remember the core operations of the community board for budgeting and for special actions that are in the city charter. So before we do this, I recommend looking at that section, I believe it's 2801 of the city charter to correspond our whatever new form this takes to make sure it maintains that function. The second thing I'll just say by way of uh, history and Chuck will get a chuckle out of this, is that the youth committee, um, which I made a standing committee when I was chair, um, was a special committee. But before that, the youth committee was actually a funding, part of the direct funding to community boards. Um, and the youth committee was a, a disbursement, distribution of city funds to community organizations. It actually had a fiscal role within the community, um, community board, I should say. Um, and then they evolved into uh, DIF, uh, the DYCD, which uh, that Julia works with now. But it has a very interesting history. Um, I did help make it a standing committee. Um, and I just uh, invite you to look into it for what it was originally created for and what it would evolve. Th those are my comments. Um, veterans, good, of course. But uh, just keep in mind city charter and some of the co the correspondence with city agency. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I think, was there another hand? Sergio. Sergio, yeah. Okay, so seeing no other hands. Um, no, Sergio. Oh, Sergio, I'm so sorry. Okay. Sergio? Yeah. You're not coming in. Generally supporting. Hello, can you hear me? Um, now I think so. Before Are you able to out. Okay. Uh, well, I, I am generally supportive of the idea, and I think a proper resolution with perhaps uh, subcommittees assigned as part of the resolution made permanent, I believe, could address the issues, especially in committees where there's not much membership, to address all of the issues. So uh, I do believe it's still worth looking into, and I think. Lisa, and I particularly want to take a moment of personal privilege to thank Lisa and for being a kind uh, partner and colleague in this community board, um, something that, you know, sometimes we've been lacking. That's never been lacking from Lisa Dow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergio. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is going to require more discussion, discussion in committees, um, you know, clearly before it moves to LRE. And that's what we're having now, uh, the listening to each other. And it's always good to look at governance and uh, think outside the box. And some of the committees are rather small and they would benefit from joining. We do have a lot of committees. Uh, I know Lisa looked at other boards to see how they um, form their committees and, and that was inspiring. And so this, uh, this, this conversation will continue and uh, that's where we are. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to budget. David. Yes, uh, thank you. I actually have two topics tonight, but I'll still be less than two minutes. Um, first is uh, just a reminder where we are. We are uh, winding down fiscal year uh, 2023, which will end on June 30th. Uh, uh, when we will start fiscal year 2024 on July 1st. Uh, we got uh, comments from the agencies uh, uh, in last month and Laura wrote a, a letter of response uh, on behalf of our committees uh, describing our, our sense of uh, what they had to say. And so we are now embarking uh, uh, on uh, our plans of uh, budget priorities for fiscal year 2025 uh, I'm sorry, 2024, excuse me. No, 2025, excuse me. Uh, even I get confused. Uh, embarking on uh, 2025. Um, and given that uh, tomorrow, the Ides of March, all committees should have or uh, pretty much uh, established their lists of uh, budget priorities for 2025 um, and, and put them in a preliminary order or certainly by the end of this month. And then next month, uh, the committee should finalize 
their priorities and get them uh, to uh, the, the capital budget uh, priorities and the expense budget priorities and get them to the office and to me by um, April 20th. The other topic is uh, um, we just received today uh, as part of um, the uh, city uh, data week, um, that is uh, this new thing, um, uh, New York City Open Data Week. Um, they're providing us with a couple of opportunities to go in and do a deep dive uh, an analysis of the um, uh, the city's budget. Um, we just got the information today and the uh, preliminary um, uh, as, um, introduction was uh, this morning, but we just got it this afternoon. But I will be uh, attending uh, these further analyses of something called Checkbook NYC, which enables us to look uh, in de uh, deep detail on each of the agencies. And I will try to do that um, and uh, on behalf of uh, the committees and report to exec um, next month so that uh, the chairs can report to all of you on uh, what <laughs> this is all about because you and your committee members may want to look into this in the future as to these details of how the city spends money. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, Special Committee on Hudson River Greenway. Bob, anything? Uh, we are still planning to have a meeting this spring. Um, given that there are no open dates in April, it looks as though it will be in May. Right. <laughs> OK, thank you. Looking forward. Uh, Special Committee on Racial Equity. Uh, I understand Margaret is not here tonight. Uh, is there anybody wishing to report? Okay. Uh, Special Committee on Veteran Services, Sergio. Thank you. We had, um, hold on one second. We hear you. Yes, we had, we, we had our meeting last week. We had a presentation on the criteria for additions to Memorial Grove by the New York City Parks Department. The Deputy Director of the Arts and Antiquities uh, section came in. And uh, our minutes will be uh, referred to our minutes, which will be out this week. Uh, there's a process. Uh, they generally said that they do not, they're not inclined to support individual plaques anymore. They're more inclined to support general conflicts. So we will be bringing that back to our stakeholders and seeing where we go from that. And uh, we also we also suggested uh, taking non copyrighted material from the VA and other veterans groups to uh, put on our website. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergio. Okay, discussion of executive committee meeting minutes of March 1st, 2023. Um, they were distributed. Are there any comments to be had? Okay, um, seeing no hands. Approval, uh, unfortunately, we did not distribute our February 14th full board minutes. They will be um, due to extenuating circumstances. They will be distributed shortly and we will vote on the February minutes at the April at our next meeting. Um, okay. Um, is there any miscellaneous business? Um, sir, I saw a hand and then I didn't see a hand. That was, yeah, that was me. Okay, Sergio. I have requested a referral uh, by email today on the issue of use of personal emails and uh, by board members conducting city business. And I, I, I request that we follow with the city agencies and I just wanted to bring that for the record. Thank you very much. Right, as, as you know, um, a letter went out today on that topic and we did get a response um, that they are, will look into it. Correct, sir. You. you got that right. Yeah. Yes, I did. Thank you very much, Laura. I appreciate Pablo in the office also yes. following up. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next order of business, moving right along, is I'm going to make a motion to go into executive session in order in accordance with Section 105H of the Open Meetings Law to discuss acquisition or lease of real property. Um, uh, so that is my motion. And uh, is there anyone opposed to going into executive session? Okay, anyone abstaining? 
All right, so then we move into executive session. That means that um, if you're not a board member, an appointed board member, you must go into the waiting room. So I'll give Luke and Pablo a few minutes to accomplish that. And then we will be voting to go out of executive session, um, you know, after that. Okay, so let me- Okay, I don't know what happened to Bob Bender. I'm here, Laura. Ah, very good. I'm here. Okay, okay. Bob- it my, It's my turn. It is your turn. I was hoping- Okay, all right, I, I think, uh, we can have we this have conversation without but, being but specific. But we're not in executive session anymore. Right. Luke, I'm aware. Let us know when um, they're back, so we're, we're good to okay. go. We are all back. We are recording. Uh, okay. Please be advised to mute if you're not speaking. Thanks. Unfortunately, I don't have very good news. Okay. So, um, Bob. Yeah. Uh, well, we have to mute someone first. Omar. Omar needs to mute. Omar, everybody mute. Maybe you can. Okay, it's All quiet right. now. Okay, we're we're back out. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free. Go ahead. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are several issues here. Um, what constitutes the heart of the district seems to be one of them, and that seems to be a term that um, can be defined according to what you want to want it to be. Um, I've I've been to the site. I can tell you that um, it took me exactly three minutes to walk from the site to 231st Street and Broadway. Uh, this site is is uh, quite close to the heart of the district and uh, quite close to the transportation hub of the district, 231st and Broadway. Uh, it also happens to be not far at all from the site that we pursued for three years unsuccessfully uh we're in we're in the same neighborhood unless you know suddenly by crossing a street you're in a different neighborhood um which is something that uh i'm afraid i don't agree with um most of our population lives east of broadway most of the community board eight population lives east of broadway uh we should be perfectly comfortable going over there and we're closer to the heart of uh, the population in community board eight um, we have met at the Ford Independence houses in their community room. Uh, there at 234th Street and Bailey Avenue for anybody who has never met there. Um, you know, that's, uh, I'll let you draw your own conclusions from that information. Uh, I know that when I left the board meetings that we had at the Ford Independence houses at 234th and Broadway, um, speaking for myself, I, I never had any concerns about where I was at that hour in the evening. Uh, the last thing I would say is that if there is information that um, the 50th Precinct has about the location, um, I hope that uh, anybody who cites that information will provide it to the board so that we can all evaluate it. Um, I, I would uh, like to see the data that uh, seems to raise concerns for some people. Um, so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we are in the heart of the district, uh, with the location. Thank you. I apologize for jumping in. Can Pablo text Omar or somebody text Omar to close his camera? We are seeing a bit too much of private information. Okay. I got it. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Thanks. Um, Rosemary. Um, okay, thank you. Um, it, again, <laughs> I'm trying to pick up um, uh, where where I left off. Uh, that uh, the location was um, extremely important for the board uh, back in 2017, um, and uh, we were um, mandated uh, to look at the. Uh, what we would call the corridor, Broadway between 230th and 242nd with several cross streets. That was the um, uh, marching orders I received and I followed them. Um, there, it, it, 
people should not think that there were multiple, multiple sites. There were three. That's it. In six years, there have been three sites. We can mention them now because they are past. They are not on the table anymore. Uh, and, and two of the three were public, were made public. Uh, the first was the storage area on Broadway near Staples. And we spent a year doing that, came very close. And it was OMB to pull the rug out from under us at the end saying it was too expensive. The second site was the computer store on 231st Street. And that, that was a better part of a year was spent on that. And uh, it, somehow the owner wasn't returning any phone calls. In discussions with DCAS and CBRE, we said we have to pull the plug. There's not, no response whatsoever, just disappeared off the face of the earth. That was site number two. Site number three was the Capital One site. And we've been dealing with that site for three and a half years. So there have only been three sites that we've looked at. All three were in the original um, uh, desired area, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. I am not suggesting that it has to be in that area. I'm only giving the background information that at a point in time and what was being followed was that Broadway corridor uh, area. Okay. Uh, uh, it, it has, I am not opposed to uh, the site, um, the site, the current proposed site. I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I just do not think it is ideal. I think we can do better. I do think we can do better. I'm not saying don't, don't do this, the, the, the site, but I think we can do better. And it is worth our time to look for some limited period of time to look for another site. So again, I'm not, I'm not opposed uh, when this resolution comes. Uh, I'm, I'm not opposed, uh, but I do think we can do better. That, that's all. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, the hands that are up, people have already spoken. I'd like to see if there are any hands of people who have not spoken, who care to speak in whatever way. Okay, um, so we'll go down. I haven't spoken, so if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Or do you mean speaking in, in the executive session or in the public session? Well, I mean, I'm looking for new voices, but I will call on people. Um, okay, uh, I'll go last. Sergio, and then David, and then Deb. Be aware of the time. And so let's just figure out um, to say what we want to say succinctly if possible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I, I believe we are as close to century located as possible with the current site. And yes, it's not perfect, but we have to move. And the perfect should not be the enemy of the good. Uh, and uh, that's why I am in support of the resolution as amended with just naming it Site 101, so we have a reference. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David. Uh, yes, uh, uh, before I make my comments, Laura, you're going to read that letter from 2017. Could you kindly read it uh, for our reference? Sure. Uh, Thank you. This is a letter to the elected officials. Um, uh, Rosemary started this, this journey. Uh, it's from September 29, 2017. CB8 has grown and the population has shifted. The central part of the district and east of the Major Deegan Expressway have grown significantly. It is clear the center of the district is the Broadway Commercial Corridor from West 225th Street to West 242nd Street. The ideal location for a CB8 office would be somewhere in this Broadway corridor or on the major cross streets of West 231st Street, West 238th Street or West 242nd Street. The corridor is well served by you know, all the transportation. I took this as my mandate, uh, gave it to DCAS because this, this came from Rosemary and I felt that the site filled all this criteria perfectly that this is, you know, it. It meets this criteria. So that's what I wanted to say. 
And uh, I, I think that we're here to be very excessive, uh, accessible to the public we serve. Uh, okay, so that, all right, thank uh, you, Laura. I appreciate your uh, uh, stating that for us. Um, I just wanna say a couple things. First of all, uh, Deb, I agree with you. It, it is a viable location. And that's how we left exec last month thinking it's viable, let's check it out. I want to correct the record on one thing. Well, my comments were about uh, it being desolate uh, and loitering uh, after dark. Uh, that was a comment that was uh, uh, unsolicited, but given to me by uh, folks from the 5-0 precinct, okay? Uh, personally, I don't care. You folks know me, I'm a cyclist. I, you know, if I leave there at 10 o'clock at night, I'm out of there in eight seconds. I'm not worried at all. My concern, the key concern I have, besides you know, noting that it is desolate at night, is that it is not in the heart of the shopping district where people, many people, many thousands of people will be walking by there and would entertain going in there to, uh, to find out more about the board, to find out more about our services, to pick up a housing guide, to pick up a parks guide, to pick up a senior guide. These are all things that have been sitting on our uh, entryway up on Riverdale Avenue and not really used. The only time they really get distributed is when, you know, people like me and Chris go to the uh, community events, the Marble Hill House Day, uh, the Marble Hill Family Day into the uh, the Five O's uh, night out. We, that's when we distribute. People aren't coming into our um, office because they're not really by our office. And the Broadway corridor is the way to get a greater transparency, greater participation, more people walking in there. And to uh, go along with that same uh, idea I mentioned. Uh, about you know just how we've had an explosion of participation with people uh, going in on Zoom, which I hope we will continue after uh, the, the the rules change. And he, this too, I hope that we will make ourselves available for, as what Rosemary said, a a better solution. Uh, th this this location is viable, but it's not a good one. Um, we don't have to do anything for two or three years. I certainly don't want to wait that long, but an extra two or three months doesn't concern me whatsoever. We're going to be there for 20 to 30 years, long after we're all out of the board. Uh, Thank you. Dan? Dan? I'm sorry, I think there were hands in front of me, but... No, but, but you haven't spoken yet. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, first, uh, thank you for bringing this topic in, in to the public purview um, and, and to the board members for discussion. It's a very important topic. This process started e years ago, um, you know, even before 2017. Uh, regarding the specific site, 101, um, I, I think it's been stated that, you know, it, it's not perfect, but um, it's good. Um, and I think, you know, the, the pros to the site, and I'll start there, the pros to the site are one, it, it's in Kingsbridge. Uh, for me, at least as a board member, I think that's important. Um, truth be told, I think that our services are needed most in Kingsbridge. And to have our office there um, within the middle of Kingsbridge on that site, I, I think it's very important. Um, so I, I like that. I, I like this, the fact that the office space is new. Um, I think that's important you know, for our staff members to have a nice space, especially after going through years of what we have right now. Um, so you know, I like that as a pro as well. Um, I think it was mentioned before, I, I don't remember an exec or after, but the, the point was well well taken, and that is bringing a presence and activity at night of our board members, I think does bring safety to the community and to the area, and it does bring more attention. Um, and I appreciate that aspect as well. Um, look, cons, is it perfect? Is it right on top of the central business corridor, like in the middle of it? No, it's not. Um, but for me, um, I, 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 you know, again, I think we should continue with negotiations. I do think that there was a good suggestion made earlier. I, I think it was by Steve Fruit, which was adding, you know, um, you know, some language dealing with that we will continue to look for other sites. And I leave the specific language out to maybe other board members. Um, and that, that's where I am on the site. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chameleon. Um, 
Yes, uh, thank you, Laura. I just don't want to, uh, how to say, I, I'm recognizing that I, I believe it was Rosemary and Deb that had their hands up. But, uh, no, but I'm calling I, on people who haven't spoken before yeah, or just, after just to get more voices. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah. So I didn't know if you want to recognize them in public or not, but my I'm making a motion if pending your agreement of giving the floor to Deb and Rosemary that had, had their hands up before me, to cl my motion is to close the meeting, close a discussion on this topic and move to vote, asking both Dan and Steve Fruit to help us wording that additional side, uh, additional sentence that they mentioned. My Again, my motion is pending your decision, Laura, to allow Deb and Rosemary to speak or yeah, not, Laura. as to close this conversation and move to vote. Thank you. Um, Deb, Rosemary, Deb. I think Rosemary's got her hand up first. Rosemary. Madam Chair, I sincerely apologize. Something has happened to my screen. I do not have the ability to lower my hand. The it, it, I don't oh, know okay. what happened to my screen. So I have my microphone. That's all okay. I have. So well, I, I, I apologize. Okay. I apologize. Right. No, no, no need. No need. All right. Uh, Deb? I, I just wanted to publicly express my support for the this site. Um, I, I, I actually believe it's more than viable. I think it's a really good site. Um, it's in Kingsbridge, it's new construction. Um, and so it does offer the opportunity to imagine the board office as we'd like it to be with um, adequate space for all of us to actually meet in person. Since now we've had you know more issues with trying to get cram into the small room that we have or find other spaces that will, that will allow us to have a full meeting where everybody can um, actually you know, fit into a room. So I think that's actually pretty exciting. Um, also, I just think that it's it's, it's centrally located. I, I, I'm just surprised that I think that this is the business district. The business district for me isn't just only on Broadway and very, very narrowly defined. I think the just business district is where all of the businesses are in Kingsbridge. And so I think it would be actually kind of wonderful to have um, our, our board office in, in this uh, at this site. So I, um, I do support very much continuing negotiations with the landlord. I would also support just saying, you know, we'll continue to look at other places because that's really been the process that we fall, 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 followed all along. So um, okay. we have to continue looking for other spots while we continue in good faith with this one. Okay, uh, Edwin. I second Camellia's motion to call the question. Well, I want to just get these. Um... You, you have to amend before you end discussion. Wait. So we can't uh, call the question before we amend, if you I want to. I didn't move. hear, you know what? Ed Green didn't talk before or now. So let me just call just, Ed Green. Just briefly, I, I think Nick Fazio made a great point earlier. If, if anybody has any concerns about things being desolate, which I don't think it is, but um, the new construction is going to increase foot traffic there. And um, the, the, the 10 bus and the one bus stop you know, literally right there, you know, it's, you walk across the street and, and so it, it's, I like the site, ditto to everything Deb just said, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, we haven't heard from Rabbi Bob Kaplan. Sure. I'm um, just doing that. I, and then uh, we, we will take a vote first. We will. Okay. okay. Thank, you very, thank you very much. You know, I always uh, like to trust the people that make choices in their lives. And people have made a choice to live in, in that particular neighborhood because they find it an appealing place to live and have and are, are expressing that in what they're saying right now, then um, I have to respect the dignity of their choices. So, um, yeah, uh, if people have made the choice that this is a good place to live, then it's a good place to work as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, would it, um... Bob Fanuzzi and Nick Fazio, and then we'll close discussion. Uh, except maybe to discuss an amendment here, but um, let, let's before be fast. Let's look at the time. I'm so I'm so apologetic because we spent uh, so much time. Before. We need to amend before we close discussion if it's going to be a friendly amendment. So please, Madam Chair, let me make a a friendly amendment to this resolution. Be it further resolved that the community board will continue looking for sites within the um, um, within the neighborhood. Catchment. The catchment described in the original letter of whenever um, that uh, Rosemary. Um, okay. All right. I accept that friendly amendment. Okay. Uh, point of information, as well, Madam yeah. Chair. As well as naming it Site 101. 
Yeah. Okay, that's the second one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, point of information, um, that language is fine with me, but who is it who looks for additional sites? Is it us or DCAS? DCAS. So then but, I think but, it should but, say... But the board members can suggest sites. No, no, I understand. But they always could. But, it, no, no, but no, right. DCAS... Steve, no, you're right. I, Steve is right, yes. Be it further resolved that DCAS should continue working with the board to seek additional sites. Correct, Steve? Yeah, that, that's 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 all I was concerned about. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. That's it, Steve. Okay, and we'll put the be it further resolved on a separate line. Okay, we can fix that. Continue yeah. working with to seek additional sites, but I they will continue really like negotiating. That. I mean, I, 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 I accept this friendly amendment, but I also think it's like a little uh, difficult to be negotiating seriously and continuing, continuing, continuing. I, I. You know, um, I want to say something. Somebody said something earlier. Nothing, nothing is perfect. And I look at the site that everyone was so upset about losing, and I was upset about losing. That had a laundromat on top with 150 washer and dryers. Uh, it was brought up that you know, what about noise? What about uh, vibrations? What about flooding? And I checked it out with DCAS, but I was a little nervous about that. Not per it was, was not perfect. The other site was right adjacent to the Major Deegan, practically attached to it. It had the CSX uh, form of property in between. I was nervous about flooding. I was, ner you know, so nothing is perfect. And I think that this site will have a sign on it, a big sign, Community Board 8, and it'll have its own entrance. The building is going to put up more lighting right there when it's, you know, as part of its plan. And I think that uh, it's going to be very accessible and I, I support it. Okay, be it further resolved that DCAS should continue working with the board um, to seek additional sites. Um, uh, would anybody be upset if we call for a vote right now? Nope. Um, Madam, Chair. Madam Chair. Uh, because many people might have dropped out, uh, uh, sorry, but I think we need to do it by um, individual vote. Okay. Um, okay. You could you could start, and I'm so sorry. I think people have dropped out. I'm I, I'm embarrassed about the time. You know how what a nut I am about that. But there's nothing that could be done. Felt this was very important to clear the air, and I think that there was a lot of support expressed by this board for this site. There were concerns expressed. And, uh, you know, let's vote. Okay, Lisa, go ahead. Roll. Okay, so for this uh, uh, resolution as amended, say if you're in favor, opposed, or abstain. So Sylvia Alexander? Yes. In favor? Constance Barnes Watson? In favor. Okay, Bob Bender? I vote yes. Okay, Kelly Buford? In favor of the amended um, resolution. Thank you. Chris Calhoun? In favor of the amended. Thank you. Lee Chong? In favor with the amended. Lisa Daub, in favor with the amendment. Uh, did Ingrid join us by any chance? No. Or Margaret Della? No. Uh, Margaret Donato? Margaret Donato, are you here still? You have to press star six, Margaret. Hello, yeah. Great. Are you with the amendment. With the amendment. I, Great. Yeah. Okay. Did, Moses, did Moses join us? I don't no. think so. No. Bob Fanuzzi joined us at some point in the meeting. Bob Fanuzzi, are you I in vote. favor? I vote yes. Great. Nick Fazio? In favor. Steve Fruit? In favor. Uh, David Gelman? I will abstain. Rosemary Ginty? As amended, in favor. Okay. Julia Gomez? Is Julia here? No. Yeah. Ed Green? In favor. Rashida? In favor. Thank you. Myra? I'm abstaining. OK. 
Okay. Robert Kaplan? In favor. Thank you. Uh, Rita? In favor. Did you hey. hear me? Yes, we heard you. Thank okay. you. Uh, Chuck Merdler? No longer present. Um, oh. In favor, as amended. Oh, you are as amended. Thank you. Ted Morris is in here. Omar Murray? In favor. Okay, Dan Paternak? Uh, in favor, as amended. Thank you. Julie Reyes? No. Nope. In uh, favor. You're there. Okay, in favor. Georgia Santiago? Yes. Georgia, are you still with us? Star six? I am. In Thank favor. You. In favor. Thank you. Ramdot? In favor as amended. Great. Laura? In favor. Great. Leona? In favor. Okay. Camelia? In favor as amended. Great. Deb Travis? In favor as amended. Thank you. Uh, Sergio? Enthusiastically in favor. <laughs> Double check, Mark. And um, Mark Marty? In favor. Okay, we got it. Uh, two abstentions and the rest in favor. I want to thank everybody for their patience, for their honest discussion. And I apologize for the late hour, but I think we got a lot of things aired here. And I think that. Um, uh, I could be comfortable telling DCAS to go forward with the negotiation and continue to look and work with the board to seek additional sites. And um, thank you, Laura. All right. Well, listen, you guys are the best. Have a good night. And oh, again, I can't thank you enough. Okay. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Laura. Good night.